Hi guys, it's Christine Bertram and I'm coming to you live from the hive on a Tuesday late afternoon, early evening. Had to sneak this one in here now because <laughs> Diane is going to be in here tonight and she has class for the Let's Just Stamp, uh, which was supposed to be last Tuesday, but because we had some snow issues that came in, and we moved coming to you. the class um, to this week. So <laughs> I know Kelly had issues with technology. I think what I need to do is reach out to support at Switcher Studio. Hi, friends, And find out why it is that the freezing is occurring. So she had the same thing that happened to her last night. She had been lucky, though. It had been happening to me every live for probably three weeks. And, you know, I wondered if it has something to do with the rollout of the whole 5G network thing that they did. They just kind of rolled that out here a few weeks ago. So I'm like, I wonder if that has something to do with it. Hi, Linda Hodge and Barb Johnson and Karen Karstay and Mary. Oh, man, and Gwen. I'll say it, Gwen Petrashek. Woohoo! <laughs> I do practice your name. <laughs> Whenever I, I look at your name, I say it to myself out loud. Hi, Vicki Tillett. So hi, Debbie Schultz um, and Holly Paplow. So, you guys, <laughs> let's hope that we don't have any freezing tonight for Tip Tuesday. Um, but you know the drill. If it does, I have it down pat. I know what to do with disconnecting my top phone and then reconnecting it. And if you give it like a minute, that usually happens. Uh -huh, and we fix it. Hi, Doris and Sharon and Becky. Okay, so when I flip the camera down, you guys, I'm going to show you what Kelly did for Tip Tuesday. Um, wait, she had Paper Pumpkin last night. So, look at these awesome cards. These were sitting here. So, Kelly did Paper Pumpkin last night in case you missed it. You can go back and watch the replay. These were the cards that, you guys, they're cuter in person. They really are. <laughs> I wasn't so certain from the pictures, but did you see the alternatives? Hi, Laura and Sue and Arlene. Did you see the um, the alternatives? Oh my gosh, look at how pretty this one is. Oh, I love it. How purplicious. <laughs> oh, and that one was so good, soft and soothing. She had gotten some inspiration from other stampers. But then that's the one that she did out of her brain. <laughs> so so it was awesome to have these waiting for me this morning when I came in here. I think she did a great job. And now I can finish up um, can finish up the paper pumpkin box. I believe that that one, hi Carla Lake, I believe that that one is still up for grabs. Um, and I know that I have somebody on my team that said that she would also, she gets them every month and she said if anybody ever gets to the point where they want one and I don't have any left that I should always reach out to her. So I could potentially have two in case somebody's looking for them. Hi Chris Duderinke. Um So that's the paper pumpkin. Um, for Tip Tuesday tonight, I think I had mentioned in a class last week that we were going to work on a card together. We were going to make a card. Uh, hi, Jean Maxwell. And that card involves blending with brushes. And I don't know if I specifically did a Tip Tuesday on it, but I thought, oh, let's do that because I'm working on these swap cards. So I know some of you caught it. I haven't, um, hi, Kathy. I haven't done my newsletter. I promise I won't wait till the 20th to do my newsletter this month. <laughs> I don't know what happened. My goal is to write it and have it out by Friday. <laughs> so in, in there is going to be an announcement about a new collection of products that is available. Hi, Naughty Nancy. And that collection of products is called the Waves of... Um, the ocean, maybe? <laughs> um, I know that the stamp set name is Waves of Inspiration, but then the dies are called the Waves dies, and the collection is called, I think, um, Waves of the Ocean. Or maybe I'm making that up in my head, but it is available for customers to purchase, so everybody can purchase it starting today. So um, w what it is is that I, um, I'm part of a swap group, and I need to get my cards in the mail by the 3rd, and I thought, well, as long as I'm doing my tip Tuesday on the first, and that's when everything goes live. I thought I'd make a card with you guys featuring that product, and that involves blending. And I'm going to talk through how I do my blending, and we're going to create a beautiful sunset. And also, another piece of advice or tip that I like to give people is when it comes to these seasonal products that are only av around for a little bit. My mom has given me this piece of advice, I think, throughout my entire life. <laughs> and as much as you can, I, you know, or at, hi, Susie or Susan, um, as much as you can do it, or I should say afford to do it. She's always told me that when you see something and you like it, you should buy it. Because if you go back to get it, 
it's gone usually, or, or your size isn't there. And I have a, like the perfect example is Tyler and I went up to Dorconi in August and we went down like a little street, like vendor thing for whatever was going down. It was in Sturgeon Bay actually. And he found this beautiful hand painted picture. It was all trees and it was gorgeous. And he hemmed and hawed. He's like, well, let's walk to the end and we'll walk back. Well, you know what? By the time we walked back, it was gone. And I told him, I'm like, you see it, you buy it. You get it when you want it. And, you know, and that's always within um, financial reasons for people, like if you can afford to do that. So that is part of my advice for this because this is something similar to last year. We had that Butterfly Brilliance that came out. It was a whole collection of product and the paper went within two weeks, you guys. And so many people were upset that they didn't get a pack of paper or extra that they wanted because they didn't act fast enough. And so, hi, Becky Harding. Um, hi, Susan Reed and Dara McCarthy. So my advice then is, to, if you like something, get it. You know, don't wait till the end of the catalog or you know you might miss it. And if it's something you can live without, then don't worry about it. But with the waves of the ocean going live today, just know that the bundle is going to carry over to the new annual catalog. The foil paper, the designer paper, and the gems are all while supplies last. And I'm going to show them to you right now, actually. Hi, Lizzie. All right. And so I'm going to show you this um, collection of products. And then, um, and then I'm going to make a card with you. So if you guys notice back here, the celebration board is there. So if officially, celebration ended last night. I think Jamie... Tafoya, you were the last person to give me an order, and I put that order in at 12.10 p.m., which was before 12 p.m. mountain time, so I had it in on time, um, and she got the, one of the, the last squares that got filled on the board, and so I looked at it, and I had said that if we had 10 names, I'd do a $10 gift certificate, 15, a 15, 20, 25, and you know, 20, 20, 25, 25, so we have 12, so we're going to do the drawing, but we're going to do it on Thursday night after I'm done with the class. And it will be for a $10 gift certificate or a shopping spree with me. Hi, Robin. Hi, Deb Norman. Um, I know I would. Yeah, so, so many people wanted that butterfly paper and it was gone. And so this is something they do this all the time, right? So people ask, right, <laughs> happy March 1st, right, Linda Hunt? <laughs> they do this all the time. Throughout the year, they will release products early and then they will make coordinating a product that doesn't go into a catalog. So people ask, well, why do they do that? Well, that's just what they do. <laughs> it's retail. <laughs> you know. And I know that Kathy Jackson asked this question too. Why do they retire our favorite things? Well, when you go shopping in a store, they don't have the same thing there that they had last year. No, they bring in seasonal products. They bring in the fresh new stuff, right? So that you're not always seeing the same things. Like that is the story of retail. And so I have to remind people of that. Like, you know, so many people are sad about Misty Moonlight going. You guys, on that newsletter question, 80 to 90% of people, I think only two people, maybe three responded a different color. So, but, and then the question is, well, why do they have to retire? Well, they have other new and exciting stuff that's coming our way, right? <laughs> Hi, Donna. So that's all I can say about like that. So. I'm going to flip the camera down, you guys, and we're going to look at what is involved with um, the collection. Oh, yes, I do have it here. I'm like, did I not bring it with? And I actually have some swap cards already that came in so that I can share them with you. I have to make all my swap cards. Like I said, they're due in the mail on um, Thursday, whatever. That, that's the third, right? Yep. Okay. So we need these for blending, and I'll show you a sample of the card. And so... That might help also answer some people's, if in case they're wondering what swapping entails. Um, ocean waves are not seasonal. That is correct. Yep. Jean, I mentioned that. So the bundle, you guys, just to make sure I didn't confuse anybody, the bundle is carrying over to the new annual catalog. But what I had said is that the designer series paper, the gems, and the foil paper, from what I understand in reading the information, the the consumable items are not carrying over. Now, if anybody's watching that is a demonstrator that can confirm that, that would be awesome. But I think that's what I read in there. So the bundle is most definitely, certainly 110% carrying over. And what they did is bring along some products to help promote the early release of the bundle. Okay. So this is going to be available now through when the catalog goes live, like May 3rd. But the other consumable things, you guys, are while supplies last. Okay, I hope that that helps clear up anything that I might have said that was confusing. So um, this is what's carrying over and going to move into the new annual catalog. The stamp set is called Waves of Inspiration. The, these are called the Wave Dies. And these two, there's two labels. Um, 
I don't know if I have it in here. It might be hiding somewhere. Oh, thanks, Chris, for confirming. Um, there are two labels in here, and I'm thinking mine is somewhere else. <laughs> um, used it for a card already. But these two labels are so awesome because you can run ribbon right through them. And a sneaky peek of a game night card, you guys. You can run, so there's the label <laughs> in action. You can run the ribbon through it, which is super cool. So you can see it come out the ends like that. Okay, so that is, you guys, that is a sneak peek of one of the game night cards that's coming up April 7th. Oh, thanks, Gwen, for confirming. I appreciate that. Okay, so the dies are awesome. Um, um, just for those people that are in person as well, Diane Bogenhagen is doing an in-person class featuring this suite of products or collection of products. Um, I believe she's got it set for March 15th. She's bringing the cards to her class tonight. And then as soon as I get them photographed, I will create that event as well. So if you're in person and want to use this product and try it before you potentially buy it, that is an option. Okay. So you guys reminder, this stuff is carrying over the bundle. And then there are these exquisite gems that are super, super cool. And it's really hard to see, but there are greenish blue ones and then they get to a dark blue. I don't know if the lighting will ever do justice to stuff like this, but the gems are awesome. The designer series paper is all watery. Hi, Marsha Kulbert. Hi, Sharon from Ohio. <laughs> so I'm just going to flip so you guys can see all watery aquatic colors going on here. Corals, navies, Pacific points, uh, coastal cabana, maybe granny apple. I'll look at the back real quick. We can actually tell the colors. Um, so from what I understand, this paper is not carrying over. Uh, the colors that go with it, coral, cabana, coastal cabana, daffodil delight, granny apple, knight of navy, pacific point, and petal pink. Oh, that is petal pink. Ugh. Okay, it looks kind of coral. <laughs> so, all right, so this is not, from what I understand, carrying over. Neither are the gems. And the other thing here is the foil paper. So pretty. So, where do I have it opened? Somewhere? Maybe not. Oh, mm, no. I, oh, man. I have to open it up. So, let's take it. Move the hand out of the way of the scissors, right? Smart move. Hi, Tabitha. Okay, hi, Kathy Groves. All right, so, three sheets. They're, oh, there's six sheets. So, you get two silver. And then there's the bluish color. So cool. Very, like, that's what the ocean looks like down in the Caribbean <laughs> or in Egypt or um, Greece. <laughs> we were in, wherever you go on a cruise ship, that's the blue water. And then there's this dark blue. So cool. So the foil is awesome. And so I know Diane just showed me one of her cards and she cut the foil with this detailed dye here. So pretty. So there was no ribbon. Hi, Jody Storman. There's no ribbon that went with the suite of products or collection. But um, so that is a little bit about what you can purchase now. I know one of my customers got the whole collection this morning, and that was awesome. You can get it as a whole collection, um, or you can buy things piecemeal or a la carte so that you can get just exactly what you want. If you do buy the bundle, you get the 10% savings, and then everything else, if you get it in the collection, um, is just normal price. So, so that's a little bit about the waves of our future. Um, it's coming now. Uh, so... What I want to do is show you some swap cards really quick, you guys. So these just came in in the last couple days. Um, and so this one was from Sandra Hernandez. So that was the stamp in, o um, in ocean, in motion, in stamp in action. <laughs> there she stamped it. So that was cool. This one came from Wendy Lee. And I love those scallop contour dyes. So she used the clouds up here. Super cool. So it's one die and it actually pushes the paper through and it, and you're like, no, oh, Diane, we were trying to figure out what those little dies, okay. We thought those were for the waves. Okay, so these little squiggly things, those are separate little dies and they go on top of the clouds to make them look puffy. Okay, very cool. Oh, I like what she did with the ribbon. She ran it up and then over. Isn't that cool? She ran up and over. And this one's from Jennifer Merle Hampshire. Um, she used, so here she used those little cloud things. So she interpreted them to be waves coming up. So that is super cool to use here. Use them in your clouds or use them as waves. She used that diorama here. And then this one came from Amanda Waldhart. And again, you guys, the scallop contour dies. Love that set. And then there's a one little baby bird stamp in there. Um, yeah. So, and here she ran the ribbon up and then back and over. So, in pool party. So, so those are the four swap cards I got. Oh, I'm freezing, you guys. Oh, my goodness. See? 
Oh, we're going to, okay. Oh, and it's back. Okay. So we're going to see if it worked. Hi, Wendy Allison. Okay. I'm back on myself because my phone froze. So I'm hoping that we're good to go. So I'm going to flip it back and I'm going to show you my swap card. So then this is what we're going to make today. Uh, and I'm just going to show you the blending here, how to make that sunset background. I had some ocean on the bottom and I have a little bit of my die cutting already done. So just a reminder, you guys, this is what I'm going to be doing Thursday night is this little paper pumpkin box. All right. So I'm still hearing, waiting to hear people to see if they um, want to, if they're going to be able to attend or not. I tried to reach out to everybody that was invited. I think there's always a little bit of confusion um, on my team. I do a separate event for my team called my team auction. And so I get a lot of my team saying, well, I spent $150. <laughs> it's like, well, did you spend that through me? No. Okay, well, then you get to work with the auction that I do versus um, the celebration celebration. So just so you know that if you're on my team and if you place the $150 in orders through yourself, that it, that counts for the team promotion that I'm doing, not through the celebration celebration. Celebration. So, you guys, it never froze. I'm watching it and it did really good. So, I'm excited about that. Okay. So, I have a little card kit here, kind of <laughs> makeshift card kit here. And I've got the paper, a label, my bird, 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 bird is the word, some clouds, and then that's extra, extra. We need these pieces. Okay. So, what I want to do for Tip Tuesday today, you guys, is go over high rows. Good evening to you as well. Um, I'm going to go over how to do the blending. So, you guys, I've already done 15 of these, right? Well, because I have swap cards, lots. I'm making 16 total. Um, so, I had to do all this already. <laughs> it took me maybe a half hour to go through and make all these beautiful sunsets. Um, they all generally look about the same. But sometimes, like there, you can see a little difference. There's a little more yellow. Sometimes they have a little bit more orange. Um, little, like, so every one is slightly different. And you really have a hard time picking that out. But when you put them next, and look, that one's even lighter than that one. Look how, like, the difference here. You can see on the card, you wouldn't necessarily notice that. But hi, Mary Scott. So what I want to do is show you how to make this beautiful sunset for this card. So the ink colors I need are coral, coral, pumpkin pie, and daffodil delight. And um, if you guys haven't gotten a pair of or a set of this, these blending brushes, you might want to consider it. Um, they work awesome. I generally don't like to mix my colors. I like my colors to stay with the, or my I should say my brushes. I don't mix my colors on my brushes. I like for my brush to stay with the color. I know when I worked with Carissa on a couple cards, we were working with Blackberry Bliss, Razzleberry, and Grape, or Highland Heather. In that case, we used the same brush because it, it's very similar. But when you have contrasting colors, you don't necessarily want to always use the same brush. So um, I'm going to start off with a little white stitched rectangle. You can see there's stitching on the side. It's so adorable. Uh, and we're going to basically make our sunset background for our our pelican <laughs> to, to watch the sunset. And then we're gonna put it together. So I start with yellow, the Daffodil Delight as my first color. And when I am doing blending, the, one of the main things that when I go to get ink, I don't go straight to my project. If you do, you end up getting it looking solid like that. And so one of the things I always do, and that's why you can see there's so much ink on my scratch paper. I like to go off the edge and I work my way onto the paper from the edge. And you're gonna see that it hardly adds any color whatsoever. Very, very light. So you go back and you gotta get a little more ink. You can see I went off the edge and then I worked my way onto it. And I'm going in circles. You can definitely see that it's a lot of circle action here. Um, you go back and forth, you're gonna get lines. But by going in that circular motion, you're gonna get softness. And so the thing with ink is that the more color you add, the harder it is to take. Or if you start out slow and keep adding and adding, then you can keep adding. Where once it gets too dark, there's nothing you can really do to take away the ink when you're doing this. And be careful. Do not accidentally spit on your <laughs> on your project. 
Don't actually take a drink of water and drip on it. Don't get any glue on it. Don't get any wetness on this <laughs> after you start going because it will completely make it run and you'll have to start over. Okay, so my, my, my tip is to start out light and then you can always go back and do a round two. Hi, Denise. Okay, so next is paper pumpkin pie. <laughs> pumpkin pie. So I'm gonna flip it this way. And again, um, I'm starting off the edge and now I flipped it so like I don't wanna go too much into my yellow. Hi, Batty. And then I'm gonna go right through the middle. Hi, Brenda Loveless. You see how I'm starting off the edge of the paper? I'm kind of coming down to the yellow, but not too much. And I'm just working through the middle section. I'm not going all the way to the top, but now I wanna hit that yellow because there looks to be more of a distinct line on that. So I am gonna kinda add a little bit of shading to help blend that. Um, I'm thinking that that's enough pumpkin for right now. Hi, Julie Frost. Hi, Cindy Miller. Um, Miss Julie Frost, I got an email from you and uh, I need to reply, but in the interim of me replying, I got your registration for the Summer Creative Escape and your check. I wanted to tell you that. It came, I think, yesterday. So I wanted to touch base with you and let you know that I did get you signed up for that class on the Saturday in July as well, and I have you down for the escape. And Cindy, too, I have you registered on my spreadsheet. So yay! Okay, so this color is um, Calypso Coral. Coral. Hi, Cindy Runtree. Um, and I'm starting it at the top and I'm working my way down. And you can see now it still looks splotchy. It looks nothing like that yet. And we're still working on it. So don't, 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 um, be patient. So I'm going to run the coral. Thanks for sharing, Cindy. I really appreciate it. So I'm going to bring the coral and keep adding color to the top and bringing it down into the pumpkin pie area just to... And I'm doing that with a like the little bit lighter of the color. So I'm not doing it, when I first get the color, I'm going off the edge and then working my way on. And as I have less color in the brush, then I work my way down. Thanks for sharing, Betty, I appreciate it. And so staying near the top and then as I get less color, that's when I'm coming down and like bringing more of that color down to help with the um, shading. Thanks, Marsha, I appreciate it. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more coral. Now, as the more intense you want your sunset to be, the more ink you gotta put on it. So right now, you could be like, oh, I'm kinda liking that. I can live with that. It's good with me. But I feel like I want more yellow on the bottom. So I'm gonna bring in a little bit more yellow and making sure I come up into the orange. Okay, and it's probably hard to notice like those gradual steps, but it did get a little bit darker. Hi, Sue Thomas. Okay, hi, Wendy Westmoreland. And then I'm gonna do a little bit more pumpkin right through the middle. Bring it up into the coral. And then I'm gonna come back. So this is called round two in my eyes. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Sue and Jody. Yeah, so all of a sudden it just starts to pop, okay? And then you've got a beautiful sunset. I think I'm good with that. I mean, you could keep adding color to it, but at some point you gotta end, right? Um, so Diane and I um, made a card um, and so did Carissa and I, let's see. Oh yeah, here it is, perfect. So they're kind of the same kind of a sunset. They're not a sun, uh, they're way past like the orange and the um, coral. These are purple. So we were saying that we use Blackberry Bliss, Rich Razzleberry and Highland Heather. So it's the same kind of concept where we use these brushes. Um, this is coming up for the New Horizons class. This one's coming up for Paradise Palms. That is um, in May actually, <laughs> we, went, we worked ahead. <laughs> so same kind of concept, you can create any kind of sunset. So. When we went up to um, Bayfield over Valentine's Day weekend, we went to St. Peter's Dome and we saw the sunset and it was a really odd sunset. I've never seen one like it. It had, I would want, I want to say strawberry, <laughs> peach, so strawberry slush, peach parfait, and like a pumpkin. And then it had a 
fresh freesia. So in, in, in stamping up colors, that was the sunset. And so as soon as I'm like, Tyler looks back and he's like, you want to make a card, don't you? I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> Take a picture so I will remember this. <laughs> Hi, Sandy with Linder. So yeah, so, it, so when you ask what inspires us, well, sunsets really inspire me. So, okay, so we're going to flip back down. Oh, you guys see comments here. Um, I wondered about you, Brenda, if you were hibernating. We need to get you out of your funk, girlfriend. <laughs> Hi, Vicky. All right, so those colors again were the coral of the calypso, the pie, which is pumpkin, and the day of daffodilite. Daffodil. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Daffodil delight. <laughs> All right, so I um, think that now, so the other thing that comes up is what do you do with your brushes? When I know I'm done with them, I like to rinse them out. But I also know that there are people that will have a brush for every color and they just keep them in a little baggie and life is good. Completely up to you what you guys want to do with your brushes. So, hi, Brenda. Okay, so we're going to get back to making our Beautimus card here. So what we can do is glue on the inside. I see that Kelly grabbed a new glue for me last night. She got down to the very end. Okay, so we're going to put that guy, oh, this one on the inside. Susan loves using the brushes. Such a nice saw. Yeah, you would never think that you could make paper look like that. So cool. So we've got basic white, Pacific point, and then this is our designer paper from the waves of the future. No, just kidding. It's waves of, oh, I have to look what the name of the paper is. Waves of the ocean is the name of the paper. And then this is just like a little one and a half by four inch strip. I'm gluing it to the bottom of the white. Hi, Cindy Kaiser. Um, if this ever happens to you, like it just happened to me, I'm like, if you ever get a kit from me, and I generally never try to make the designer paper be shorter than the white, you will find nine times out of 10 that I always make the designer paper longer because I don't want this to happen. To have that, you see what's happening is that is there. If that ever happens to you guys, all you have to do is get your trimmer and then just trim off that hair. Um, nobody is ever going to know that the DSP came a little bit short. So there's another tip for you guys. You guys are getting loads of tips with me tonight. Okay, now though we need the linen thread and we need to run. There's three of them actually that need to get run through here. And so we need one... You guys, me and my ribbon conservation at its finest. Okay, so there's one. I'm not wrapping. I don't wrap ribbon around cards, you guys. Um, so now I got a little hot mess going on. Oh my goodness. This is like, I love linen thread. Somebody asks me, what is my favorite ribbon in the catalog or extra thing, like ribbon or twine? Linen thread, hands down. You can use it on every card almost. <laughs> it's very universal, okay? Um, so there's that. But... I'm going to prep the back of this with tear and tape so that it's ready to catch my ends. So let's get that off and ready. And what we have to do is you have to grab the end of each one of these and kind of weave it through the little tail. So if you have like one ribbon, it's a lot easier, but I have the three. So I'm going to put each of the three tails through the left side of the happy birthday. Okay, I'm trying to make them all about the same distance. And then what I want is my bottom linen thread. Oh, you know what I did? Hang on, hang on. I had a trick. I had a trick to make this easier on myself. So, because this stuff is all so squiggly. All right, tear and tape to the, to the rescue. Put a piece of tear and tape right down the middle back. Okay, and our tear and tape is going to catch the, <laughs> she goes, <laughs> oh my gosh, it feels like worms, but it's not. Okay, it's really weird, they're so squiggly. Okay, so we have enough there, and now it's sticking to there, <laughs> very nice, it's under control. Okay, we got our linen thread under control. And then I want that one a hair longer. Now you can choose to use one, but you guys, I'll be honest with you, the three is what sets this apart, is that you have the three. Otherwise, it's not bulky enough. It's too thin. So let's get you little guys through there. Yay, okay. 
and let's just test it really quick because it's gonna go like this, perfect. Now we have to flip this over and grab some dimensionals and we only want little strips, so one, two. And I do that because I've got that ribbon or linen thread right down the middle and so I'm gonna create a little track. So there's one, and I could have used white dimensionals, but I don't see any back there. So <laughs> pinch the thread and run it between your fingernails to straighten it. Yes, Mo, that would be a great idea. <laughs> that would be, to do that beforehand would have been awesome. Yes, but I like for you guys to see me to struggle every now and then, right? Because the struggle is real when we're stamping. So now I have that ready to go. I want my saying, let's see, it's almost all the way to the edge, and I want it like that and now my tails can flip back here and flip back there okay good good and we're gonna pickle them even more with a little extra tear and tape to make my sandwich okay and now once you have the tear and tape on I go back and add a little liquid glue to the rest of this. And this can go onto the card front. So the bottom color of the bakes was Pacific Point. We originally started, so Diane and I worked on this one together. This is one of her class cards. We designed together and we said, you should use this for your class, yay. I get a swap card out of it <laughs> and you get a class card. Um, and so we originally started with Knight of Navy and that, um, that was too dark. So you guys, on this little dude right here, there's some rope. And to make that rope look, doesn't the blended background have to be down before the sentiment? Oh, yeah. Good cough, Carissa. It'll work. We're just going to sneak that right in here. It's good. <laughs> you know, I haven't made this card since last week, but we're going to fix it. It'll go right there. Yep, good call. I would have figured that out when it came time, but I'm glad you pointed it out. Thank you. <laughs> and so there's this, <laughs> you see, we all help each other. So I lost the end of it. <laughs> it's right there. So, but there's this rope looking thing. So I'm putting tear and tape on the back and to help make this look realistic, you just wrap some linen thread around this. We're gonna do one more like that. And then you end in the back, hit the tear and tape. And then you can snip the end loose and put a little bit more tear and tape over the top. Perfect. And a few dimensionals will go on here. <laughs> I'm not putting it down yet. Just <laughs> we'll get there. I'm going to make sure my, um, my sunset gets adhered properly to here. So I did pull up this slightly, so we're not stuck. So just add a little liquid glue to the back of this. And now we're going to sneak this back in here. All good. See, it helped having the label there. Now I could see how much yellow I wanted to put down. <laughs> yeah, right, Chris says. <laughs> I did forget. Okay, then this little guy, you can put him off to the side here, like that. Um, I would recommend a pumpkin pie marker. It's gonna be good with this one because you can color our dude's little beaky. Give him an orange guy beak. And then the other thing I would do is, you have a blender pen. One of the things you could do with our little log action here is you could add, so this is just stamped in crumb cake, but what you could do is just color over the top of it. And what it does is it blends it a little bit. Just softens it a little bit. Okay. The clouds are, I love the mother of the pearl. Mother of pearl is amazing. It's six sheet, or six dollars. You get two 12 by 12 sheets but it's so sparkly. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I think I'll pull out some white dimensionals for them. <laughs> oh, she put them in the drawer. I wondered about that. I'm like, I know I had white dimensionals somewhere. <laughs> okay, let's get this one on here and put this one 
Oh, do you hate when that happens when they stick together? Put that. Oh, you guys, you're gonna laugh because I did this when I made the sample card too. We're like, oh, we should add some birds to the card. <laughs> well, we didn't know where to put the birds. So we did literally stamp the birds after we put the clouds down. So <laughs> pretty much the card is flat. So the birds stamp, okay. <laughs> so let's get the birds really quick. <laughs> Hang on. All right. It's actually one little bird. And um, he's all by himself here. And let's get... Um, hang on, basic gray. So we did it in basic gray, and he's a, a one little guy all by himself, so lonely, but we're going to give him a buddy. So, oh, you guys, I think I'm frozen. <laughs> I think the camera froze. <laughs> so I might have to flip it off and flip it back on. All of a sudden I looked up and I'm like, my hands are frozen. So hang on. Let's take it off. Yep, it froze. I caught it too. I think I might have even caught it way before you guys did. So um, what do we got for time? 5.30. Okay, we're almost done though. So you guys, I had lots and lots of tips for you. I don't know if my phone's going to come back. So we're going to disconnect it, shut it off and do our thing. <laughs> yep, I know, Donna. <laughs> it's the story of my life with this Switcher Studio. And like, it started three weeks ago. I'll be honest, something like three weeks ago. I sometimes it's twice and sometimes it's once, but I have a fix for it like you wouldn't imagine. And it usually takes me about 30 seconds. And so I'm hopeful that that fixed the problem. <laughs> Thanks, Wendy. Okay. So, all right, we got to talk <laughs> because here's another tip coming for you. You just made an awesome card and you want to stamp something on it. <laughs> be very careful. And that's my tip. <laughs> all right. So be very careful. Don't press too hard. Don't get any halos. Don't have it under stamped, but be confident. Okay. So I want to put these birds, right? Because the birds really add to it. They, may, they, they dress it up just a little bit. So I always recommend practice first. Let's see what it looks like. Oh man, it's going to be okay. And then we're going to go for it. You cross your fingers and your toes and you make it happen. Oh, there it is. Okay. There's one. And we're going to make this one going the other way. So, all right, you guys, there's our bird action. Okay. And then if you want to, you can make a couple of them hanging out over yonder there. Okay. So last, but certainly not least, and I have to say, it's always my favorite, one of my favorite parts. You would think adding ribbon is one of my favorite parts, but it's not. <laughs> adding embellishments is usually my favorite part. And remember from a previous Tip Tuesday, you've learned that I hate that flap. So I always cut my embellishments right like that. And then I don't ever have to deal with the flap in and out. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna grab a few gems and put them on our card. So. Uno, dos, tres, okay, bueno. So we have here, <laughs> I don't know how many tips that was in one tip Tuesday, you guys, but that's what you get from me when we make a card together. You got lots of little tippers. Okay, so what, if you guys, if anybody tried to reach out to me in the last 24 hours, I should say since Saturday, I've been working on lots of things. And so I did a scrap tip Tuesday, maybe three weeks ago now. It was right after I started my leave of absence, which I have to go back on Monday, you guys. So my last week here in full action, I gave you guys a challenge to work on your craft rooms and cleaning up scraps. And what I did on Saturday and into Sunday, I spent a day and a half decluttering and cleaning up my craft room. And I, oh, Doris, I, and you're one of the ones I'm, uh, gals I'm talking to. I know I, you are looking for some information on how much you owe for classes, but I haven't figured out what game night is yet. So I, I got to put that together yet, but I got my whole craft room cleaned out, put it back in. Oh my God. It's like the weight off of my shoulders. It is the most amazing thing to walk into my craft room now and feel like I can breathe it. Like not that I couldn't breathe in there before, but you guys, I challenge you get your workspaces cleaned up. Um, I have before pictures and I have, I have to take the after pictures after one thing gets hung up, which I'm so excited. I went onto Amazon and I bought 
like where you go to the nail salon and they have all your nail polish bottles or their nail polish bottles hanging on the wall. I bought something like that to put all my ink refillers on, on the back wall. And I'm hoping that Tyler will hang it up tonight and then I'm going to take the after pictures and I'll share them. And then what happened today and then after that, I cut cardstock for 600 card kits. And my mom and I got about 500. Oh, we have two left to do. No, we have one and a half left. We did 450 of them today and we have 150 to do tomorrow. So all day I've been working with my mom on kitting up cards. And so if anybody's emailed me or reached out to me and I haven't gotten back to you, I'm okay. <laughs> Don't worry about me, but I will get back to you. And as much as I, I tried to sporadically answer as many people as I could, but I know there are a few of you that are waiting. So be patient just for a little bit longer. I need to get through another like tonight and tomorrow, and then I'll get back to you on what people owe. But as long as I know you're signed up for classes, that's that's great. So just a little note that that's what I have been working on. It was so much fun working up there with Clean Space and I'm stamping with Carissa on Thursday and she's going to be blown away like holy Moses. She's not going to know that it was the same craft room. So <laughs> I just want to remind people one more thing here too. Um, oh, Jean, yeah, you're right. I should put photos in my newsletter. That is a very good idea versus just posting it on Facebook because that post gets lost in transit. So, oh, I have I have been a busy boot bee, Susan Reed. I sure am. So just a note too. I know Kelly mentioned this last night. This is what my mom and I are working on. I have 81 people signed up right now for fun folds, but I did prep for 88, you guys. I uh, well, That's what we're working on. Hi, Patricia Settle. So I know that's a lot of people, but I have this feeling that seven more people are still going to sign up for this class. And I didn't want to have to tell people no at this point. So, um, and I could because I hadn't started prepping and I didn't start prepping. I cut paper, you guys, for nine hours. <laughs> um, I cut over for, I think from, I don't even want to tell you what time I went to bed on Tuesday morning, when Monday morning, but these are the fun folds, you guys. And I love it. So it's not, I'm not complaining, but I love it so much. So just so you know that that's what we're working on now. The other thing we kitted up today um, were these, and I have about 10 spots left for this one. And then um, the Let's Just Stamp, which they're over there. I have maybe four left for March that are unaccounted for. Um, oh, and I froze again. How do I keep freezing? Oh, there it's back. Whew. Okay. Hi, Diane. Hello. Oh, Diana. Hi, <laughs> Diane says hi. She's going to start setting up for class, but I want to sneak her away to show you the craft room that I got cleaned up. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. You guys, I'm so excited. Bomb just blew up in mine. <laughs> oh, Diane just said she had a bomb that blew up in hers like a crafter math. You guys, that happens. Yeah. <laughs> that happens when you work in your, your room, right? So, okay. Um, what else? I think that's it because I'm getting kicked out of the hive, you guys. <laughs> so if anybody needs to sign up for any upcoming classes for March and you haven't told me so yet, you know, if you've told me, you're always okay to double check with me because sometimes I do happen to forget things. I am human. Um, so if you're uncertain about it, you can always reach out. But if you're not signed up for something and you want to be, please reach out as soon as possible so I can make sure to get you on the list. Um, well, I hope you guys enjoyed Tip Tuesday. That was like a whole bunch of Tip Tuesdays in one nutshell. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the blending. That was fun. We did the blend of the card with, that we made on Friday. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So it was good. Would oh, you want to show me your cards? Here, wait, wait. Come here, Diane. Bring me your, your other two cards. They're not done, are they? No. no They're not completely. all done, you guys. Not completely. But so this is what Diane was working on. Ooh. It, it, she's up here. There you Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay. This is what she made. You guys, look at this card. Isn't that exquisite? Ah, so that's the foil. That's the silver and the dark. And then she put the, some of it on the clouds here. You figured that out was for the clouds. Okay, so Jennifer made one here, and she used it as waves. Oh, nice. And then the, um, here it was used as clouds. Okay, yeah. so that's one card. Yeah, I did okay. figure that out. Oh, and this is her other card. So this is... So I'm probably going to add pool party to that. Oh, the pool party shimmer ribbon. Right. Yeah. Yep, yep. Okay, so this, you guys, is in-person class with Diane on the 15th, we determined? 15th. Yep. 15th. So this card, this card, and... This. Yep. So you guys, this is the waves of the future class. Right. So I did. So I did put the bling on. on oh, the, on this one. On the yeah, night isn't, one. Isn't that an awesome the night class. sky? The night sky, a nighttime card. So and here more blending. Right. With the brushes, awesome. Yep. Oh my gosh. So yeah, everybody's saying beautiful, beautiful. Oh, and I'm, I'm Deb Norman says hi. <laughs> hi Deb. Yeah. So you guys, this is in person with Diane on the 15th of Mar March. I almost said May. So. All right, I will give you these back. Okay. Perfect. She's got to get set up, and I'm going to wrap it up with you guys. 
I have the game night cards done, but I did not get the memories and more card class. And I want to um, showcase those both at the same time. And at some point, I need about two hours to finish those. So as soon as I can get them done between now and maybe Thursday, um, we'll do that. So, uh, so be tuned for that. So I will have a little sporadic live here in the next couple days. It'll probably mo most likely be Thursday. Oh, Chris is here Thursday. I don't know. I'll figure it out though. So <laughs> Linda says stunning. So pretty. Love them. Beautiful. They're all so very pretty. Oh. Love them, Diane. Oh, okay. Thank you, She's Diane. getting the love. We love it. And I'm freezing again. So I don't know, you guys. I'm going to end it now before we keep the freezing happening. Lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you guys. We'll see you later. Bye.